Da. Oops. Welcome to the Green Dream Project. <laughs> Jim here. Today, I am going to do a complete overhaul on our rainwater system. I'm about to convert this system from a wet system to a dry system. Now, if you don't know what that is, I'll explain it real quick. I'll just give you the lowdown, dirty deets. And there are advantages and disadvantages to both. I'll go over that real quick. So a dry system is basically a very simple system. It goes from your catchment to your storage immediately. Water just flows from point A to point B and that's it. It's usually the best type of rainwater harvesting if you can do it. A lot of times people will have a barrel underneath the roof and they'll have a simple downspout that goes from the roof right to the barrel. That's a dry system. No standing water. Very nice, very simple. If you can do it, that's usually the best way. A wet system, very much like I have right here. You might install a wet system if your catchment is a little bit away from your storage. Or maybe you're catching from a couple of different surfaces and you need to combine those. There might be several different reasons. But whatever the case, you're usually running pipes underground and then over to your storage. Now what a wet system basically means is that there will be water in those pipes. It'll be sitting in there until the next rain comes. Water will go into the system, it'll fill those underground pipes, and it'll sit there to your next rain unless you have a way to drain it out, which will technically turn that wet system into a dry system. That might have advantages for a couple of reasons. So if you're running those long distances, having those pipes underground will one, keep that water from freezing if you're in temperatures where water might freeze in the winter. Even here in the high desert, temperatures will get cold enough where those pipes will freeze. It'll protect those pipes from animals, people, going across there, you don't want anything trampling on those pipes, breaking them. It'll kind of keep it away from any other types of infrastructure. It's just down, up, in. Usually that simple. I was avoiding doing a dry system. I was kind of hoping I could do a wet system uh, just to avoid the extra infrastructure. Apparently I'm gonna have that. That's okay, it just basically adds a little bit extra structure around here. Uh, it shouldn't get in our way. Of course, I did have to do a little planning to make sure that what I'm building here is not going to interfere with any future water tanks that we might add. So let me show you that. So aside from working on our water harvesting system that I'm doing right now, I also have planned on adding overflow to future water tanks. Overflow will come out the back of these tanks and they will flow into future water tanks. I already have those marked out where they're gonna be, whether we're gonna buy them or we're gonna make them, that remains to be seen. So that's enough talking, let's get to work. Let's switch this over from a wet system to a dry system. This day isn't getting any cooler. It's just gonna get hotter from here. Let's get to work on these pipes, yeah! Wet to dry conversion begin! So it's possible we could have more rain coming soon. This is monsoon season. I'm gonna try and have this all done within a couple of days. I got my trusty sawzall, complete with a new fresh blade. Let's do some cut. We ain't gonna need this anymore, I'll tell you that.
eye protection. I'm gonna try and reuse as much of this material as I absolutely can. That means using this huge section of pipe. We'll see how that goes. So ultimately, I couldn't decide whether I wanted to try and keep this in one piece and have the both of us try and string up this 50 foot long piece of PVC or cut it up. Well, I ended up cutting it up. I'm gonna try and use as much of these pieces as possible because why not, they're still good. So I took the Sawzall, made my initial cuts. Some of them weren't too pretty. That's okay, I cleaned it up over at the miter saw. Now we'll be putting these things together and we're gonna string it up along the bottom of the roof. Get ready. All right, so I made it pretty far with just the piping that was along the front of the roof. I lost a little bit because I cut it all up into pieces. It's probably the only easy way to do it. So unfortunately we lost a little bit of length. I had to scrounge up other parts of the pipe to get pieces to fit all these together, but I'm out. I gotta dig for more, almost literally. So I need these pipes. I'm gonna start cutting up some of the pipes down here, dig out some of that dirt over there and uh, clean them off and get them painted and get them ready to use because these are going up in the air. All right, so I'm full on expecting water to be in these pipes. So it's gonna get messy. Okay, so the first thing I did before I attempted to do this is I opened up the release valve on the pipe going into the tank. That way water should drain down to uh, probably right about here. I think I'm gonna start by cutting up this pipe and I'll work my way down. Man, that water looks nice and crisp and clean. Too bad it's all about to go into a dirt hole. All right, sometimes you just gotta go for it. All that precious water. As you can see, we've been stringing up that pipe along the bottom of the roof, but guess what? We well, ran out of roof and we gotta get it over to the tanks. So what are we gonna do? I gotta build a little structure to give that pipe some support. Oh yeah, support structures in the house. So this is kind of my idea, short and sweet, just to kind of create like a mini track from the rest of the roof over to the tank. That'll definitely support the weight for sure because for the four inch PVC pipe, when it's full, there'll be about roughly five pounds of water weight per foot. More than enough support for that weight. All right, so I'm gonna cut this last section of pipe, get this out of here, remove the section of pipe going into the tank, and I'll put my new piece in, and we'll be able to connect everything up. Took a little finagling, but it's out. I guess you don't want it to pop out real easy, so I guess that was good. <laughs> da. Oops. All right, one shot. Here goes nothing. <laughs> I think we got it. Yeah. It's in. So we're now fully connected. Pipes going from the roof, connected to the tank. We're not quite done yet. As you can see, this length of the pipe is unsupported. So what I wanna do, I wanna dig a little, this trench a little deeper, getting closer to the tank. Then I'll be able to put a post right underneath there 
and connect another board going over here. Well, that's it for tank number one. A little challenging getting the pipe all the way underneath the roof like that. Obviously, it's got to get strapped all along each of the rafters because we want that supported at as many points as possible. I figure each 10 foot length of pipe should be approximately 50 pounds or so. Which is not super heavy, but you want as many supports as you can on that because it's right overhead. I think this should work real nice. We might even be able to test it today. A lot of clouds, we could see some rain. All right, thanks a lot for joining us. Don't forget to like, definitely subscribe because you gotta see how the system turns out. You gotta see if it works or not. All right, thanks a lot for joining us everyone. We'll catch you at the same off-grid time at the same off-grid channel. Later.